that's interesting. Let me ask Mr. Sasson a question. Now, you graduated from Rensselaer in 1973, and two years later, working in the Kodak Apparatus Division Research Lab, you designed and constructed the first, first digital still camera and playback system. Now, you've said that you were not allowed to discuss that invention or your many other digital-related inventions and innovations that followed for decades. And you've noted that during various portions of that time span, the product, the company, and the country were not ready for your invention. So it is an amazing case study of the emergence of a truly disruptive technology, but in a tradition-bound company. So tell us briefly about those experiences and what you know, are your observations about uh, disruptive technologies and their acceptance? Well, um, you know, I began at Kodak right after I graduated, as you said, and, uh, and I had this opportunity to do something that I had no business doing. Um, I had no idea how to build this thing. Uh, I was just given a very 20-second kind of uh, uh, request to, to look into charge couple devices and how we might be able to use them for imaging. And I thought, well, if I could capture a still image, I could at least evaluate it. And then I thought, perhaps I could build an entirely portable camera. And then I thought, if I could build it with absolutely no moving parts, I was an electrical engineer, so I sort of like that. Um, uh, you know, to, to try that. But I, I really had no idea how to go about doing it. So uh, uh, I. Uh, basically worked with some very talented uh, technicians for about a year and, and pulled together this entire system, and, and it worked. And, and I, I learned a couple of things right away. Um, one is that when you demonstrate such a system that is taking pictures without film and, and, and showing them on an electronic screen but without printing on paper inside a company like Kodak in 1976, um, <clears throat> you, you have a couple of things you have to get ready for. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and one of those is a lot of questions. You know, I thought people would ask me a lot of questions about the technology, how'd you do this, how'd you make that work? Didn't get any of that. Uh, really, I had to think, but they asked me, when is it gonna be ready for prime time? When is it gonna be realistic to use this? And why would anybody wanna look at their pictures on an electronic screen, you know? And uh, I, was, I really had no good answers for that. So I think uh, as a technologist, and if you're working in a disruptive field, you have to think a little bit ahead, and you don't have a lot of data to support a lot of your conclusions. You have intuition, you have some ideas. And so uh, we wrote this in a technical report in 1976, and they sketched out what was called the camera of the future, and I talked about memory cards, I talked about sending them over telephone lines, and I thought, well, this may happen, but I don't know when. Uh, and, and when I was pressed, I came up with about 15 to 20 years, which when you're in industry, 15 or 20 years is a long time. And most of the people sitting in that conference room are not that concerned about it. And so you have to take a really long view of this and work on the pieces necessary to make it come together. And then you have to realize that your idea of the future is really not the way it's going to turn out because the rest of the world is inventing along with you. <coughs> and so such things like the internet and desktop <coughs> photographic printing and all of those things that I hadn't really thought about, they came together in the 90s. And then all of a sudden, we had a, a viable photographic system which completely displaced the conventional one. Um, so I was pleased to be part of this activity, but many times I was along for the ride as I learned different technologies were being applied. Um, and uh, it was a very, very interesting development to watch uh, a very established, a very successful company deal with uh, a disruption that uh, eventually uh, caused uh, quite a bit of change. So, fascinating. Well, you know, it's a classic story of, of uh you know, how you can, how you have to sometimes go against very powerful institutional forces to, uh, to bring about change. Uh, 